everybody welcome to my youtube channel dr srinivas medical concepts and my fb page dr srinivas concepts this is dr srinivas neurologist from rajmandri andhra pradesh india i am also the medical author of the book focused neurology today we are going to talk about a very very interesting and exciting topic the brain death brain death and the important concepts of brain death my email is cklpm at gmail dot com brain death this is a state of irreversible cessation of all cerebral and brainstem functions with preservation of cardiac activity and maintenance of respiratory and somatic function by artificial means so brain death indicates that it is a state of irreversible cessation of all cerebral and brainstem functions brain death means it's an irreversible state and that life support is useless and brain death is the principal requisite for the donation of organs for transplantation so very important for donation of organs why is this brain death so important because when a person has attained the actual death the organs may not be functional and at the same time a person who is completely alive we may need we may not be able to take organs for donation because he is alive and obviously he would not like to depart with the organs and takes his take his life for risk so we need to select such a state wherein the organs are still functioning but the person is not going to come back to life so that situation is that state is brain death so brain death is an irreversible state but still his organs are functioning so that the organs can be taken for donation so very important for donation of organs for transplantation the principal requisite we need to certify the brain death so brain death is the principal requisite for the donation of organs for transplantation and what is the one important factor which differentiates the death from the brain death in the death there is a cessation of all functions whereas in brain death there is a cessation of all functions except cardiac activity the cardiac activity is still going on and then the respiration has to be maintained by artificial support like ventilator so the main difference between death and brain death is that in death there is cessation of all functions whereas in brain death there is cessation of all functions except cardiac activity cardiac activity is still going on then we may wonder if the person is not breathing how is going to survive that particular state he is being able to survive and continue his respiration by artificial means like ventilator so very important so brain death is the principal requisite for the donation of organs for transplantation in adults traumatic brain injury and subarachnoid hemorrhage are the chief causes of brain death whereas in children abuse accidents and asphyxia are the common causes of brain death what is the criteria for brain death the criteria for brain death contains two essential elements after other confounding factors like hypothermia and drug intoxication are ruled out so what are the two essential elements one there is a widespread cortical destruction that is reflected by deep coma and unresponsiveness to all forms of stimulation second there is a global brain stem damage demonstrated by absent pupillary light reaction absent corneal reflexes loss of ocular vestibular reflexes and destruction of the medulla manifested by complete and irreversible apnea so the two essential elements are one deep coma and two brain stem damage the deep coma is because of widespread cortical destruction right so the brain stem reflexes should be absent 
So what are the brainstem reflexes we are checking out? So here you can see the midbrain. We check it out by the pupillary reaction to light. When we throw light, the pupils constrict not only on the same side, which is a direct light reflect, but also on the consensual, the other side, which is known as consensual light reflex. So when we throw light, the pupils have to constrict. So when we throw light and when the pupillary pupils constrict, that means the midbrain is intact. Midbrain is functioning well. And how do we test pons? Pons is tested by two reflexes. One is the corneal reflex. How do we check corneal reflex? By touching with the wisp of cotton the cornea, both the eyelids close. This is known as corneal reflexes. The afferent is ophthalmic division of the trigeminal nerve. So fifth nerve is in the pons. And the efferent is bilateral seventh nerve. Orbicular is ocle. Seventh nerve is also in pons. So when we touch the cornea with the wisp of cotton, when the, both the eyelids close, that indicates the corneal reflex is intact. Here there is one important clinical concept. The cornea does not have touch receptors. It has pain receptors in the form of free nerve endings. Perhaps the nature wants the eye to be protected well and therefore instead of touch it has given pain receptors so that the person is able to appreciate the pain immediately and respond by closing the eyelids so that the cornea is protected well. So corneal reflex and second is the ocular vestibular reflex or oculocephalic reflex. So the third and fourth nerves are in the midbrain but 5, 6, 7, 8 are in the pons. So the eighth nerve vestibular component connects with the PPRF on the opposite side. PPRF connects the sixth nerve lateral rectus on the same side and through MLF, through MLF the medial rectus on the opposite side. And therefore, when the vestibular component is stimulated, the eyes go to the opposite side and the front eye fields area number 8 will try to compensate it by putting the eyes to back to normalcy so there will be nystagmus. So, when we stimulate the vestibular apparatus either by turning the head to the side or by putting warm water, the eyes go to the opposite side and the nystagmus is to the same side. Whereas if we put cold water, we are inhibiting the vestibular apparatus. So the opposite vestibular apparatus gets stimulated. The eyes go now to this side and the front life fields area number 8 will try to put the eyes to normal position. So there will be nystagmus. So when we put cold water, the nystagmus is to the opposite side. When we put warm water and stimulate it, the nystagmus is towards the same side. So COWS, C-O-W-S is the acronym cold water when we put it we are inhibiting the vestibular apparatus and the nystagmus is to the opposite side when we put warm water we are stimulating the vestibular apparatus and the nystagmus is towards the same side cause so if the ocular vestibular and ocular cephalic reflexes is intact corneal reflex is intact that means pons is intact the medulla oblongata we check it out by looking at the respiratory neurons if the person is able to breathe well spontaneously on his own that means the medulla is functioning well. So, how do we check the midbrain pons, medulla, oblongata? Midbrain, the pupillary light reflexes are intact. Pons, the corneal reflexes and the oculocephalic reflexes intact. And medulla oblongata, person is able to breathe well. So, this is how we check the brainstem reflexes. As I said, the ocular vestibular re reflex, you can see the diagram. Both the vestibular apparatus as well as the frontal eye fields area number 8 both are connected to the PPRF so frontal eye fields area number 8 is connected to the opposite PPRF which pushes the eyes to the opposite side in a fast manner the vestibular apparatus is also connected to the PPRF on the opposite side but now it pushes the eyes in a slow manner so when the vestibular apparatus is stimulated the opposite PPRF is stimulated so it connects the sixth nerve on its side and third nerve through MLF on the opposite side and the eyes are pushed towards the opposite side. So frontal eye fields area number 8 will try to compensate it by putting it to normal position so you will have a nystagmus. So when we stimulate the vestibular apparatus either by turning the head or putting warm water, the eyes will go to the opposite side but the nystagmus will be to the same side. The opposite manifestations occur when we put cold water. When we put cold water, the vestibular apparatus is inhibited. So 
it cannot push the eyes towards the opposite side now this vestibular apparatus will push the eyes towards this side and the frontal eye fields area number eight connecting the pprf will try to put it to its normal position so there's nystagmus so cold opposite warm same that is the acronym right next we check out on the brainstem after the brainstem reflexes we check out on the apnea test after the absence of the brainstem reflexes has been documented so once the brainstem reflexes are absent we have to confirm that it is a clear cut case of brain death and how do we document it we document it by apnea test so after the absence of the brainstem reflexes has been documented apnea must be formally tested so demonstration that apnea is due to medullary damage requires that the partial pressure of carbon dioxide be high enough 60 millimeters mercury or 20 millimeters mercury above normal baseline values to stimulate respiration during a test of spontaneous breathing so when the partial pressure is elevated to pseo2 p when the partial pressure of carbon dioxide pseo2 is elevated to 60 millimeters of mercury the medullary centers are stimulated respiratory centers are stimulated and the person is forced to breathe if the person's medulla is not functioning well despite the pseo2 being 60 the medullary respiratory centers are not stimulated because the medullary respiratory center medulla is not functioning and the person will not have spontaneous breathing so this is apnea test so apnea test can be done safely by the use of pre-oxygenation with 100 percent oxygen prior to and following removal of the ventilator so the carbon dioxide tension increases about 2 to 3 millimeters mercury per minute during apnea apnea is confirmed if there is no respiratory effort so if no respiratory effort has been observed in the presence of a sufficiently elevated pseo2 that is 60 millimeters mercury or 20 millimeters mercury above the baseline so the apnea test is usually stopped if there is serious cardiovascular instability right so now let's uh, talk about the confirmative test of brain death so now we need to confirm that there is brain death the brain death has occurred so what are the confirmatory tests for brain death one is eeg electroencephalogram when we do electroencephalogram we have the alpha beta theta delta waves coming up in normal persons but if a person is brain dead there is an isoelectric eeg when there is an isoelectric eeg it confirms that the person is brain dead second is we do cerebral angiography the contrast medium should be injected under high pressure in both the anterior and posterior circulation no intracerebral failing should be detected at the level of the entry of the carotid or vertebral artery to the skull so if the person is brain dead and when we do cerebral angiography no intracerebral filling should be detected at the level of entry of carotid or vertebral artery to the skull so if there is no entry of the contrast that means the person is brain dead the third is we do transcranial doppler measurements and fourth we do radionuclide brain scanning wherein we give a dynamic nuclear scan where, where we do a dynamic nuclear scan it, if the person is brain dead it shows no intracranial filling the lower part may get filled up but there is no intracranial filling what we call it as hollow skull sign so if there is hollow skull sign that is a dynamic nuclear scan showing no intracranial filling it indicates it implies that the person is brain dead so these are all the confirmatory tests isoelectric eeg cerebral angiography transcranial doppler measurements radio nucleate brain scanning showing hollow skull sign yeah very interesting phenomenon is lazarus sign sometimes when we have declared that the person is brain dead to our surprise and astonishment and to the patients relate to surprise there may be some movements occurring even after brain death like hands coming and falling on the chest but they are not actually they are of the spinal origin so brain dead persons can still have these movements because they are of spinal origin example lazarus sign so what is this lazarus sign occasionally other reflexes that originate from the spine may be present and should not preclude a diagnosis of brain death just because these movements are there it it does not it should not preclude a diagnosis of brain death 
the lazarus sign or lazarus reflex is a reflex movement in brain dead patients which causes them to briefly raise the arms and drop them crossed on their chest lazarus reflex is a reflex mediated via the spinal column and not through the brain therefore this movement is still possible in brain dead patients yeah we have declared brain dead but then there are certain neurological states that can neurologic states that can mimic brain dead so we have to be careful before confirming that the person is having brain death. So what are the neurologic states that mimic brain death? One is the locked in syndrome most often caused by an embolus to the basilar artery. When there is an embolus to the basilar artery and there is spontane infarction, pons is the center for all horizontal eye movements and therefore when the pons gets affected, person cannot move his eyes horizontally. He cannot use his upper limbs and the lower limbs because of the corticobulbar and corticospinal involvement. The only movement possible is up and down vertical movement because the midbrain is intact. So locked in syndrome, he cannot use all four limbs, he cannot move eyes horizontally and therefore this state, locked in sta syndrome, this state may be mistaken for brain death. So we have to be very careful when we go through all these, when we, when we are going to certify brain death, these states may mimic brain death. One is the locked in syndrome, second is gulen barry syndrome, again there could be quadriparesis. Uh, and, they, and therefore it will be mistaken for brain death. Hypothermia. Hypothermia we should always rule out because brainstem reflexes disappear when the cold temperature, when the temperature drops below 28 degrees Celsius. So when the temperature drops below 28, what happens? The brainstem reflexes start disappearing. So we may think that the person is brain death. In, in reality, the person may be suffering from hypothermia and therefore we should always try to exclude hypothermia before diagnosing that the person is having brain death. Fourth is the drug intoxication. A clinical diagnosis of brain death should be allowed only the drug levels example barbiturates which are used to treat intracranial pressure are below the therapeutic range. So these four states can mimic brain death. Locked in syndrome, gulen barry syndrome, hypothermia and drug intoxication. Note, when ingested in large quantities, many drugs can cause a lo partial loss of brainstem reflexes. Right. Now, having gone through all the uh, details of brain death, now let's see what is the final clinical criteria for brain death in adults and children. So, the clinical criteria for brain death in adults and children are 1. Coma. 2. Absence of motor responses. 3. Absence of pupillary responses to light and pupils at mid position with, resp with respect to dilatation. That is, uh, pupils are dilated. Absence of corneal reflexes. So, pons is affected. Midbrain is affected. Absence of caloric reflexes. Absence of gag reflex. Absence of coughing in response to tracheal suctioning. Absence of sucking and rooting reflexes. Absence of respiratory drive at a PaCO2 that is 60 millimeters mercury or 20 millimeters mercury above normal baseline values that is the apnea test. And then the interval between two evaluations according to patient's age. Why we have to have two evaluations because of the limitations on the clinical examination of neonates. An observation period of 48 hours is recommended as well as a confirmatory test. Because of the limitations on the clinical examination of neonates, an observation period of 48 hours is recommended as well as a confirmatory test. Very important. So when we evaluate neonates, we need to have an observation period of 48 hours as well as a confirmatory test. So interval between two evaluations according to patient's age, term to two months old, 48 hours, more than 2 months to 1 year old, 24 hours, more than 1 year to 18 years old is 12 hours, more than 18 years old interval is option. Likewise, when we come to confirmatory test, term to 2 months old, 2 confirmatory tests, more than 2 months to 1 year old, 1 confirmatory test, more than 1 year to less than 18 years old, optional, more than 18 years old, it is again optional. Yeah, these are all the important clinical criteria for brain death and uh, 
I am the author of the book Focused Neurology. My name is S. Srinivas. You can see it on the book. So, uh, most of the neurology points I put it in a question answer format, which is available in Focused Neurology, which can be bought on online. So, these are the important concepts of brain death. I hope you have enjoyed listening to it. If you have any suggestions or comments, kindly post on to my YouTube channel. But please like and subscribe my YouTube channel, Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts and my every page, Dr. Srinivas Concepts. Thank you. Bye.